started. Yes, how's it going, guys? Hi, Roger. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, no worries at all. Thank you for being available. So, Brian, where are you? You're, you're in a different country, isn't it? Yeah, I'm in a different time zone. I, I live down in Guatemala. I've been here for the last year and a half, chasing the sun, as it were. Nice, nice. And what's, what's the time there now? Because it's what, almost half six in UK. So half six in the UK, it's now 11.30 in the morning in Guatemala. All right. I'm guessing you guys have probably had uh, nice weather as well as us. We're pretty, we've been pretty lucky in UK, I must admit. Yeah, I've heard you guys have had a, a pretty spectacular summer, which is great. I'm really, <laughs> really happy for you. Uh, but Guatemala is summer 365 days a year. <laughs> no matter how good your summer is, mine's better. Yeah, yeah. Yours is for a longer period of time. But it I don't know. Continuous. Like, yeah, exactly, right? I've always thought that. Yeah, I remember one time I went to St. Lucia and I was saying, I remember when I was there and I was doing some shopping. And when I was in the shop, I spoke to a lady and I was like, oh, you're so lucky. You got beautiful weather all the time. And then the lady said back to me, she said, yeah, but I would so love to see different seasons. And that mm -hmm. never even occurred to me. She was like, we've got two mm -hmm. seasons summer and i think she said hurricane season i was like oh wow yeah okay oh i was like hurricane season might be worse than winter <laughs> yeah yeah what's it like there what's the seasons there so we um we have two seasons as well we've got dry season and rainy season right so we we don't really get hurricanes where i am the hurricanes are more on the coast i mean the hurricanes do pass over us but not like emergency levels so we have a, a dry season and a rainy season. Um, and so it's, it's, very, it's really hot all year round, but in rainy season, like right now it's rainy season. So there'll be every afternoon, it'll start raining at about maybe 4 p.m. and rain till about 11 p.m. And that's about it. And then you wake up in the morning and it's hot and sunny again, and it's beautifully green, amazing landscapes. It's really, it's incredible, man. Absolutely. You know, I lived, I lived in, in the UK for on and off for 16, 17 years. Mm. Um, and at the end of that time, I was like, man, like I, need, I know I need sun. I need regular, beautiful, bright sun on a, <laughs> on a, on a daily basis. You know? So that's, that's the reason why I moved here. Like I was really suffering in the UK. Right. And where are you originally from? South Africa or something? Just listening to your voice. South Africa, exactly. Right. All right. Exactly. Makes sense. <laughs> I, need I, that grew up with, I grew up with beautiful weather, <laughs> moved to the UK for too long. And just you know, the first few years was OK. I was I was like I was more excited about living in the UK than I was worried about the weather. But then when I got over living in the UK, I was like, man, like this weather is bad. Like even summers can be really bad. It was just like, oh, no, this is not going to be good for me. Yeah. Oh. It's mad extremes here. Sometimes it's really sunny. And if it's sunny, it's really sunny, like stupid hot mm. with no breeze. Um, yeah, it's crap. But um, let's, mm. let's bring on the topic of today. What, one thing I wanted to speak to you guys about was red light therapy. It seems to be a, a very trendy topic right now. Lots of people have decided to get themselves into red light therapy, red light panels. And there's so many different devices. I've even seen people wear glasses. Uh, and I'm not even talking about blue blocking glasses. I'm talking about red light glasses, glasses which have some sort of uh, lights around it, which are supposed to help with like maybe lines around the eyes or something. Uh, if you guys mm -hmm. haven't thought about that, maybe note that down. <laughs> well, maybe, uh, yeah, hey, listen, that. if you want to partner up on that, that sounds great. You know, we're, yeah. hey, we're happy to, we have to split it with you. All right, let's have a discussion. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's uh, this whole red light therapy thing is is pretty interesting, and um, I definitely want to get more into that. So, people who are not very familiar with it, I want them to understand it in 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 what you guys understand of it, and and with what you, things which you have been doing over the years as well. So, mm -hmm. both of you, uh, Brian and James, are the co-founder of Red Light Rising. Is that correct? Yeah, 100%. and how long? Yeah. I'm sorry? 100% correct. All right. How long has this company been running so far? 
So we're, um, we're just about two years old right now, just a little bit over two years old. Um, and yeah, we're a, so we're a young company, James, my business partner, James Strong, who's also on this call with us, this uh, podcast. Um, yeah, we just met in London about two years ago. We met at a, a biohacking event. Um, at exact, it, was, it was uncanny, actually, because we were both there to learn about red light therapy because it was the first red light therapy kind of biohacking event in London. Um, James and I didn't know each other before this. We went to this event and, and saw this red light therapy device and listened to all these really experienced biohackers and, and wellness pros talk about the benefits of red light therapy. Um, and I think we'd, we'd both been reading about it because as you say, it's, it's, it's not a new therapy by any means. There's a new technology, which is making it way more accessible to the home user, but it's not a new therapy. It's, it's been around, you know, some say since the early 1900s, there's been, um, yeah. there's some scattered documentation about, you know, the, the older folk there using the red light therapy. So James and I were ready one, when we met at that event. And, but then, you know, because there was only one red light, you know, consumer level red light therapy company at the time, and the, the devices were crazy, crazy expensive. Mm. Um, so James literally looked at me and was like, you want to try and make some of these lights? Should we try and kind of make our own? And I was like, okay. You know, I was, I was very much into health and wellness there, but I wasn't, wasn't really working in the industry. Mm. Um, yeah. So fast forward a couple of years, you know, we, 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 did our research, made our lights, and thankfully have been, um, you know, doing okay from it. So it's a, it's, it's really a great place to be. So how long did it take from you both talking about it, realizing, hey, this will be a great idea, to actually manufacturing and selling? Mm. So James had actually been doing all the research behind the scenes. You know, we, we saw the lights at the same time. Uh, both decided they were too expensive for us to buy and and we just you know kind of parted ways there went, went back to whatever we were doing mm. and then a couple of months later james called me up and said hey man i've i've, I've figured this all out uh, we've got manufacturers uh, do you want to help me you know put these put this company together and so james did did all the work behind the scenes he did all the research over a couple of months um, and lined up the manufacturers so when we decided to start red light rising it was like Literally, we were sitting in James's loft on a computer, like <laughs> designing the logo. We came up with the name and, you know, James already had the website built. So it was like, oh, okay. We just literally hit play. And, um, you know, those early days, it was me on the Instagram every morning before work, you know, trying to think about, oh, what am I going to write today about red light therapy? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, James on the other end, like behind the website, running the website, running the manufacturers. And, and that's kind of... Uh, you know, what happened and, and awesome. the, the beauty of it was that the world, you know, at least our world, the wellness world and the biohacking world, they were waiting for red light therapy. You know, there was one very expensive company and a, a big community of people that were interested in um, getting into red light therapy. So uh, a lot of it is, you know, very grateful. We came, we decided to do it at the perfect timing, you know? So I think once we had, once we actually made the panels, I think, it was it was amazing. We got the we got the sample of panels for Brian and myself and another friend, and quite quickly, we all noticed the benefits straight away. You just have this uptick in energy straight away. You feel a bit more energized. You don't get muscle soreness, and, and it was it was quite amazing. And straight away, we I was, I was just we just thought and looked at each other and said, "This is incredible stuff." And you know, we didn't have a goal to set a company up. We didn't have a, that sort of vision that we'd create Red Light Rising. We just wanted ourselves to find new levels of health optimization and to make our quality of life better. And, you know, given the challenges we had to, to find this technology at accessible price, that really motivated us to try and then make it accessible, you know, make it available to as many people as possible in the UK and Europe at the time that could then use this technology at home and get the amazing benefits and pain relief that Red Light Therapy can offer. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about this big kind of price barrier where it was pretty expensive to start off with. Why do you think it was so expensive and how you guys managed to drop the price so drastically in comparison? Well, I think, um, you know, the, the, the first company that was kind of that went to the consumer market with red light therapy panels for the home, mm -hmm. um, they were the first ones there. So I think they, pretty, you know, they could pretty much do what they want. Um, right. And they did a, 
they did a really good job of, of spreading red light therapy. You know, that's something they did really well. They had a, they, they do still have a great marketing team. Um, so they did a great job of spreading the, the benefits of red light therapy, but they 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 were just, in my opinion, just, just priced too high. You know, they were, they were going for, you know, the more wealthy people, the celebrities, the, the pro athletes, whereas the guys like me and James were like, what about us? You know, like we, you know, we have day jobs. We can't afford to spend this kind of money on, on this. Um, but then, and then of course, what happens now? There's what off the top of my head, at least 10 red light therapy companies I can think of. You know, a lot of them are very obscure because of course, what happens in every industry, you get one or two lead players or three lead players and you get everybody else who just copies them because, you know, technology nowadays, I could send my Apple laptop to China and they'd copy it and send it back, you know, make a much cheaper version. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of guys that are copying out there, copying lights, copying designs, um, but obviously making, you know, big sacrifices in quality so that they can come massively underpriced. And then you're buying something that might look similar, but you know, if you had to pound for pound measure it, uh, it wouldn't be as effective. So, you know, all that competition happened. So everybody started dropping their prices. And we just made our prices, you know, way closer to what it actually costs, mm-hmm. basically. Because James, James has got a day job. I had a day job for a very, very long time. We can't live off red light rising, despite, you know, what, what it might look like. You know, we have to, we have to keep working at other jobs. But yeah. this way, you know, way more people. Now, because of red light rising, thousands of more people are using red light therapy. And, and that's the goal, you know. That's brilliant. That's exactly. That's it. brilliant. So our goal was just to spread red light therapy to as many people as possible. And so from day one, it was never about profits or, you know, charging as you know, the maximum we could. It was about charging something that was acceptable, reasonable, and that would, you know, allow people then to have access to it, really. Mm-hmm. Let's get into the benefits of uh, red light therapy. So mm-hmm. people call it, call it a photobiomodulation, red light therapy. Is it the same thing? Does one mean more than the other? And what is it altogether? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So I guess um, you're correct. People do call it photobiomodulation. Um, I don't like to use that word because it's, it's not that it's misleading. It's just not accurate enough. So mm-hmm. photobiomodulation just refers to any light, any kind of light that can biologically modulate the body or you know, affect the biology of the body. So that can be blue light. Blue light is photobiomodulation because the blue light affects you, it does things to you. It can be UV light, that's photobiomodulation because it gives you a tan or it makes you sunburn and it gives you, you know, helps with vitamin D. So red light therapy is a type of photobiomodulation, but I, I just don't think that's a great word to use. You know, we, we try and stick to just saying red light therapy. So that's yeah. what it is. We're selling, we're selling red light therapy, not photobiomodulation. But you can say two things. If someone says it to me, I know what they're talking about. I don't be like, what? What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> um, so that's that. And red light therapy is a very, very powerful, very, very beneficial kind of therapy by which you expose your body to red and infrared light. That's all it is. You stand in front of um, very, very, in, in our case, very, very big light panels with LEDs, uh, up to you know, 2,400 LEDs in our biggest unit. Wow. Um, and you just expose as much skin as possible and this red and infrared light penetrates your body, um, it penetrates the cells of your body and then it causes two very, very significant um, biological changes inside the cells of your body. There's many, many uh, different mechanisms what, when red and infrared light penetrates the body. But the two main ones, the two most important ones are the following. So the first one is we get an increase in cellular energy production. So that sounds exactly like it is. It's this red and infrared light penetrates the body, causes, it stimulates an increase in cellular energy production. And then when that little cell has way more energy to use, the tissue has way more energy to use. And ultimately the entire body has more energy to you know, use to take care of whatever processes and, and things that need to happen in your body in that, you know, that moment, that period of time. 
And the second very beneficial um, mechanism that we're getting from red light therapy is it's a, it's a very, very acute hormetic stressor. So I know you'll be familiar with that, Roger. A hormetic stressor is basically anything that we kind of voluntarily or sometimes involuntarily do to our bodies to cause them to go, grow stronger and to cope with the threat. So lifting weights is, is always a great example that I use. You do some bicep curls and in that process, you're damaging the muscle fibers and then causing them to repair and come back stronger so that they can better deal with the stress the next time it comes around. And that's what red light therapy does as well. It causes a tiny bit of stress, very short lived on the cells of the body and causes the, this, this cascade of, of um, um, uh, results to release anti-inflammatory enzymes and anti-inflammatory proteins uh, out of that cell into the blood system. And then those natural anti-inflammatories go around the body and contribute to lessening inflammation throughout the body, wherever you may, may have it. So those are the two main mechanisms there. And, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, James, James can also speak a bit about like the incredible amounts of benefits that like what this translates into. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I don't think there's exclusively like, you know, one part of the body that red light therapy can't positively impact, you know, I think every person out there could benefit from, you know, whether it's increased energy, pain relief, enhanced gym performance, less muscle soreness. You know, we, we haven't even touched on the, the collagen synthesis and the skin benefits and wound healing. So we know that the beauty industry also, you know, utilizes red light therapy a lot for red light facials. Again, you know, it helps sort of plump out your skin, reduces fine lines and wrinkles, and can really rejuvenate your complexion as well. Um, so, it's, uh, you, so you not only got beauty industry, then the sports industry is now also catching on, and you're seeing NFL teams have red light therapy rooms. So again, I think more and more people are learning about the benefits. And, you know, and the amazing thing about red light therapy is, even if you're targeting better skin complexion, you're going to get all the other benefits as well. So you'll also get the, you know, the deeper benefits about brain, you know, and cognitive function, uh, you know, executive function, you're going to get the, you know, rejuvenated skin and also the muscle benefits as well. So again, you know, you're not exclusively getting one benefit, you're getting all these benefits when you're using red light therapy. Mm. So the, with a red light panel, it has the red light and it has the near infrared, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Could you get a normal red light bulb to get the red effect that you have from the, <laughs> just asking as I'm sure oh, lots of people just want to buy a red light bulb. Hey, yeah. this is cheaper. <laughs> it's a great question. It's a great question. Now for the benefit that we've just, just discussed, no, that isn't going to work because the reason why the light panels have to be so big is because they have very, very powerful LEDs in them. You know, these aren't, you know, household LEDs that you, that you pop in your, in your ceiling. These are very, very powerful LEDs with very powerful drivers because the light has to be so intense that it has to penetrate your skin deeply because our skin um, reflects most colors of light. You know, so all the other colors of the light spectrum get reflected by our skin and, and some of it gets absorbed, but very, very minimally. But with red and infrared light, that goes into you. That doesn't get reflected. So that goes into your body, but as soon as it penetrates, it starts to get, get, get absorbed by the cells, right? So you need a very powerful light to get deep into your body, deep into your muscles, to, to penetrate all your organs and your bones and your blood. Because like James was saying, you know, and you mentioned with those, those, those red, red light glasses, which you know, I, makes perfect sense. It, I'd imagine that they're using it to, to target the crow's feet around eyes and the wrinkles around eyes. Makes perfect sense because red light therapy stimulates collagen production in the surface of the skin and then that collagen begins to plump up the skin. So it makes perfect sense what you're saying. But what we're saying is, why would you, if you're going to spend time you know, giving your eyes a treatment, why wouldn't you do it for your whole body? Because the real magic is when the red light therapy penetrates your organs and your glands and con contributes to the proper functioning of all of that. Because, you know, your organs and your glands are the cogs that are making your body work. Obviously, mm -hmm. muscles and, and bone really help as well. 
but that's where all the hormones are getting secreted. That's where all the chemical reactions are happening. So in my opinion, and I think this is James's opinion as well, if you're going to spend any amount of time getting light therapy, you've got to get it all over your body because it's the same amount of time, but you're getting a massive amount of benefits. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, those, those little red light bulbs that you buy and, and stick into your ceiling, that's great because that's not interfering with melatonin but it's not giving you any other of these, you know, these energy or anti-inflammatory benefits. Right, right, right. <clears throat> I was just thinking though, like um, with the panels, amazing, they're powerful. And in fact, I want to come into that, how powerful they are. But um, when people are, I don't know, maybe busy walking around, not everybody wants to stand in front or sit in front of the mm -hmm. panel. So, you know, something which is a bit more mobile, would be pretty cool as well, don't you think? Like a suit, a suit, <laughs> like a jump, a suit. A jump suit made of red light. There's another business idea. Oh Roger, yeah, let's, going in on this. let's talk. <laughs> it's recorded. It's so, recorded. Um, what is the actual power? What is the is it is it measured in nanometers or what's what's the frequency, the power of the red light panels itself? Yeah. So the um the the light waves are measured in nanometers. Okay. So, uh, you know, light, light is energy. So it travels like a wave, you know, like a wave of the ocean. Um, and that right. nanometer just describes the length of, of each light wave. Um, but for, yeah, for people who are listening, that's a great question. There is two kinds of light in uh, red light therapy panels, in, in most red light therapy panels. Um, people, we speak about it as, as red light therapy, but it's, in fact, it's, red and near infrared light therapy. So the red light is 660 nanometers and that's visible as red light. It's a very, very bright red light. And the near infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye. So you can't see it, um, but that's 850 nanometers. This is the same kind of light that comes off a of fire and comes from the sun. It's the infrared light that you feel as heat. So when you stand in front of our devices, they're very, very gently warming. Um, they don't make you sweat, but they're gently warming. And that's one of the things that the infrared light, how it manifests on the human body. Right, right. So is that, I'm guessing that the, the length, the wavelength that it gives out is to imitate nature then, I take it. So are there devices out there that don't give that same amount of, wavelength um i'm assuming that you know if you get cheaper devices do, do you have you come across anything like that yeah so um um so the, yeah so just to go back to your original question i realized i didn't answer it um yeah so the the wavelength the the 660 and the 850 is the type of light that's mm -hmm. not the power of the light that's the type of light coming out type, of it right and then the power is is the next very important thing that you need to look at okay because like you mentioned, you can, you know, nowadays you can do a red light therapy search and find the whole gambit from, you know, double digit prices to five or six digit, no, even, um, yeah, six digit prices um, of red light therapy. And that's because it's, it's, the, it's the quality of the device, of course, you know, the, the workmanship, but mm. also the power. So our lights now are, we've got new lights coming out actually, which, at the top end of our new range, it's the most powerful light on the market right now. And that's important. The power is important because it goes back to the depth. You want the depth of penetration from the light. And that me, and so that's, that's one thing. And you also want the amount of treatment time because the human body can only absorb so much light at one time. And there's a, a, a fairly complex equation on, on how you calculate how much light your body is receiving, depending on the distance you're standing from the light and the actual power output of the light. Very boring equation. Um, but with our new lights, you're looking at treatment times of eight to 10 minutes to get your maximum dose of red light therapy per day. And if you go for a much, much cheaper light, you're looking at, when you do the equation, you're looking at treatment times of 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, just for your body to absorb the optimal amount of light. And, you know, for nine out of 10 people, that's crazy. No one has an hour to, to sit around in front of a red light. 
Yeah, true. So with the red light panel, do you have to sit or stand in front of it and then afterwards turn around and do the other side or like when a person's tanning? Or could you just sit or stand in front of it and it penetrates all the way through? 100%. Yeah. yeah so, so on this one, as you said, you need your skin exposed to the light in order to get the benefits. Mm-hmm. And then also you need to also turn around. So the red infra- red light penetrates about 1.5 centimeters into the skin. The near infrared goes about five centimeters. So obviously you could do a front body session where you're getting your, your eyes, the glands in the front of your body, you're getting your pecs, your abs, your, your quads. But if you want to do your glutes and your back muscles as well, you're going to have to turn around. And that's why intensity matters when, when you look at devices because you don't want to have to do half an hour on the front half an hour on the back you know if you could do five minutes front five minutes back and that's 10 minutes of your time and you can stack your hacks in the morning for example and therefore you know do your morning meditation or breath work or you're doing a bit of reading in the morning or writing your journal again as long as your skin is exposed to the light you can stand in front of it and multitask and do other hacks that you do in the morning to set yourself up to win the day Mm -hmm. oh that's pretty cool Cool, cool. So you've got loads of different devices, isn't it? You've got the uh, you got the panel, the big panel, and you got a is it a half stack or something? And yeah, then correct. The, That's right. And then we've the, got a small, more portable light, which is the target light, which you can use for targeted therapy or just your face. And I like to travel with that as well because it's um it's an E twenty seven socket, so I can if I go to a hotel, I can screw it into any light fitting as well, which means I'm I'm upgrading the light environments in any hotel room I go to, which are typically very blue and white lights dominated mm. oh that's really good that is really good mm. i think a portable device is very important you know mm. because you might have everything at home but then you travel and then all of a sudden all your goodness is left at home and you're suffering <laughs> from all the that's artificial it. light which is around you so that's something cool. that's probably a bit less portable is, is what brian mentioned is, is our new range of lights that are coming out so again they're going to be you know cutting edge technology they're going to be the most intense lights in the market but again we've designed a modular design that allows the lights to be connected together and it's going to create a basically two meter by about a meter wide of light you know it's going to be a wall of light so it's great for the larger athletes or the time you know time pressured individuals mm. you can actually create a sandwich effect with the lights as well we on stands so again it's all about efficient use of time you know these professional athletes that are going to be using our lights you know they want to get in get their treatments the optimal dosage before they get out and train you know they've got lives and things to go on with as well so so yeah. again, if we can create a more efficient environment so they can become, you know, less injury at risk and better performance in their training, then it's going to be a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. What about the space that that will take up this new, new device that you got coming out? So the What's panels the are only six centimeters deep. So again, they are relatively narrow um, and the stand again, doesn't take too much space. And these mm-hmm. panels can also be hung on the back of a door or a wall should athletes or individuals want to use them at home. So again, you know, we have customized, customized design solutions for everyone so they can incorporate red light therapy into their life. Because from my opinion, you know, everyone can benefit from it. So we want everyone to be able to use it. And, you know, there's going to be no excuses of, I can't fit it in my house or my flat or it's too big. You know, we've got solutions to help people. Including the new lot, which you're going to have coming out. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's okay, cool. Cool. What about um, blue light blockers and red light? Do, would you say that they go hand in hand or is something completely different? What's your thoughts on that? Um, I think they're, um, they're two different hacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that your listeners are, are probably well aware of blue blocking, but I'll go into it briefly just for the sake of people that uh, might not know what it is. Um, so blue blocking is basically a practice it's a it's a pretty fringe practice because it's a little bit goofy but it's really really i mean it's it's 100 percent established by science there's no disputing the effect of blue light um and it's now actually becoming a, a lot more popular thankfully so all that means is you blue blocking is the practice of restricting artificial light in your environment um, from sunset onwards, you know, we can, there's a lot of nuanced ways you can do blue locking throughout uh, blue blocking throughout the day. But the most common way that people do it is, is after sunset. And the reason for that is because, um, blue light or white light is very, very bright light. Um, we are, we've biologically evolved to receive this bright light from the sun from sunrise 
throughout the day and then the evening sun goes down and then there's pitch, pitch darkness. And the reason why this is important is because this is our trigger, you know, historically speaking, biologically speaking, this is our trigger for us to wake up in the morning with the bright light, feel energized. Our brain knows it's daytime because it receives the signal through the eyes and therefore all the daytime um, hormonal processes are, are, are kicked into gear. But then, of course, when the sun starts to set at the end of the day and goes through the, the yellows, the oranges, the reds, the purples, and then the black, the complete darkness, those messages go to our brain as well. And when there's a, a massive reduction in blue light, that tells our brain it's nighttime. Therefore, the melatonin production starts uh, to happen in the brain and the body, and we fall into a beautiful, peaceful, deep sleep. Mm. But with the modern environment, we're surrounded by iPhones and cell phones and laptops and Netflix and TV and cheap artificial LED lighting and, and street signs and all these, this bright light that's coming at us after sunset or after dark. And that artificial light sends the message to the brain that must be daytime because daytime is the only time uh, in nature when you see bright light. Therefore, I'll switch off the melatonin production, boost the cortisol, boost the adrenaline, and then you can't sleep. You have a terrible night's sleep. So blue blocking is mostly in the form of wearing blue blocking glasses, which should have orange or red tints. And that filters out the blue light that comes through your eyes. Your eyes only absorb orange and red light, and therefore it doesn't affect the melatonin production in your brain, and you can fall asleep like a peaceful little baby. <laughs> so where red light therapy comes in is um, one of the big advantages of red light therapy, uh, one of the big benefits, should I say, is um, balancing your circadian rhythm. And uh, the circadian rhythm is, is more or less what I've just described with the, how your body operates in a 24-hour cycle with the day and night cycles. Um, so you can use red light therapy to complement your circadian rhythm or, and to um, optimize your circadian rhythm and to balance it. And one of the ways you can do that, um, there, there's, a, there's a method you can use in the mornings, which uh, I'll let James explain. But the method that we can use at night is you can use red light therapy, not necessarily on your body, but in your environment. You can use this red light, but the key is, after you switch off that red light and you go about your evening business, you have to put the blue blockers on because with the red light, you're telling your brain, the sun is going down. This must be sunset, the red light. So after the red light naturally comes darkness. So you have right. to block the blue light. If you don't block the blue light, you're just confusing your brain. It must still be daytime. Therefore all bets are off. <laughs> that sounds pretty funny. Actually, when I think yeah. about it, one minute yeah. is red. All of a sudden, you, you know, you switch off the panel and you've got lots of blue light. Your brain's like, mm -hmm. what the mm -hmm. F is going on? <laughs> exactly. I just pictured someone going completely crazy for a second there. Mm -hmm. and that's why uh, a lot of people say to balance the blue. So in the evening, if you've got a red light just in your environment, even if you're not getting a therapeutic dose from the light, just having a red light in your environment, your eyes are going to be picking up those signals. So again, if you do happen to have a blue light in your environment and the red light is there as well, it's going to balance it. So again, it's offsetting that negative signal from the blue light that's going to tell you it's daytime. Mm -hmm. So again, the evenings, I know that Brian and myself are very similar on this, will always have a red light lighting our environment. I'll use it for my reading light. You know, I'll use it just to, you know, around my house to see what I'm doing and walking around. Um, and so it just ensures that you're respecting your circadian rhythm and not interfering with that melatonin production. And I think mm. Brian and myself, and Brian touched on it, the, the, you know, our morning routines. I think both of us prefer using red lights in the morning. As the sun is rising, you're going to see a lot of red light in the sky. So again, it's a really strong marker for the circadian rhythm to use red lights in the morning and get those signals in your eyes. And also scientific research has demonstrated by using red light in the morning, you're optimizing your gland and your hormonal production. And that means when it comes to the evening, because your body's doing its job better, you get an increased serum melatonin level in your blood. So I think the research and studies demonstrate you get a 70% increase in melatonin production by using red light therapy in the morning, That's which amazing. again, when you think about recovery and sleep and the importance of melatonin, I mean, that, that is incredible stats. And I know that I've definitely experienced a much deeper better sleep after morning red light therapy sessions mm. so that's from using it in the morning you found yeah. that in the evening 
you'd have better sleep. Yeah. One thing I've tried to understand is, as you said, it's good for the morning and it's also good for the evening um, to do with the sunlight. I, I do question though, let's say for instance, you're, you're in artificial light throughout the, the whole day, for whatever reason, you're in an office, you haven't been out. What if you switch on red light in the morning and then you've got your artificial blue light throughout the entire day and then you go straight from that to red light again wouldn't the brain still be confused how does it know when it's morning and when it's evening so does that that's make a great, sense yeah yeah, yeah that 100 percent makes sense and you know the the most important thing in that equation if possible which i know it's not possible for most people is to leave that artificial environment right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's the problem is being under that bright blue light all day. Um, and you know, red light therapy, what we say to people, it's not a replacement for the sun. You still have to, you know, go out of your way to get the proper amount of sunlight every day, which is, you know, it's, it's a problem in the Northern hemisphere and it's a problem in the winter and it's a problem in the summer. People don't realize that they think, Oh my God, we have these 16, 17, 18 hour hours of sunlight or whatever it is. Um, um, how great, how great is this? And it's not good, you know, because the body is evolved in Africa. The body evolved for roughly 12 and 12 of, of sun and dark, mm -hmm. but red light therapy is, can be especially helpful for those people who are, are spending all day in the office because you're not, you're getting a tiny, tiny bit of benefit from that artificial blue light because it's jacking your system up. It's getting your body like, woof. Okay, well, whoa, it's daytime, I got to go. So that's a tiny bit of benefit there. But the problem is it's, it's the same, the same quality of light for the entire eight or 10 hours that you're in that office. And that's the problem because in natural light, it goes from gentle orange and you know, yellow and red and then bright light, bright light, and then it starts to dim at the end of the day and then go into darkness. And so that's the signal you're supposed to receive. You're supposed to receive all those very subtle changes in color because that guides your body. Your body reacts to those very, very certain colors and then ultimately you fall asleep. So how red light therapy can be benefit those people is at least adding two other extra colors of light. So you're adding the red and the infrared light at two points in your day. So that becomes your anchor because then that acts as your sunrise and your sunset. So, um, you know, what I would do what I do now, because I live a lot closer to the equator, is my day and night is very, very similar in length all year long, which is perfect for my circadian rhythm. But if I was still living in the UK, what I would do, which is going to sound crazy, is I would plan my days to be exactly the same amount of hours you know, every day, all year. So what I mean by that is, it's in my opinion and, and my understanding of biology and circadian rhythm is that it's not natural to have sunlight until, well, I mean, it is natural because it happens, but it's not ideal to have sunlight until 9.30 at night because we're all supposed to sleep eight hours. And, you know, we, our sleep has to start in the dark. So you can't, you can't, you know, well, we can wait until 10 p.m. to go to bed. And I know millions and millions of people do. But what I would do is I would have my days set up exactly the same amount of time. So in the summertime, in the Northern Hemisphere, around 6 p.m., I would use my red light device to mimic those colors of the sun because it's still going to be bright as midday outside. But in my living space, I'm going to mimic the sunset. And then after that, I'm going to blue block, even though the sun is shining until 10 p.m. Because I want to tell my brain that it's, the sun has gone down. 8 p.m. it's dark. Uh, 9 p.m. I'm asleep. And by midnight, I've already hit uh, you know, most of my deep sleep cycles and my REM cycles. Um, because in my opinion and from my learning and my understanding, that's how a, a healthy circadian rhythm should be planned out. Mm. Absolutely. So you've got to decide what time you want to go to bed and basically work backwards and what is your optimal routine for you. And again, work, around, work your light therapy in the respect of the circadian rhythm around that. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for instance, you're living in a really bright, hot country. Will there be much need for red light therapy? Yes. Um, it's, it's still very, very beneficial. So, you know, I live in a, in a very, very hot, bright country. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the reason, one of the reasons why I mentioned it. <laughs> so, but, but it's, it's a very, very beneficial therapy because a, you can get, you know, the sun has incredible benefits. Sun is always your priority, but 
um, red light therapy is a fantastic supplement. And the reason is because I can get the very best wavelengths of light from the sun, which is, you know, the reds uh, and the infrareds and, you know, UV and all that stuff is important as well. But of course we know UV in very, very small amounts. There is zero, zero risk or damage or harm associated with red light therapy. The sun unfortunately comes with um, a lot of um, uh, disclaimers, you know, sunburn, skin cancer, heat stroke, all that stuff. Mm. Um, so this way I, you know, I get my sun, I get my morning sun first thing in the morning. I make a point to go out to stand in the sun as naked as possible for 10, 15 minutes around midday. And then I'll go in and out throughout the day to, to get all those different colors as the sun's going down. But the red and infrared light is also very, very beneficial as a supplement to natural sunlight because it gives me that deep penetration, that deep energy production, the deep anti-inflammatories, especially for, you know, all three of us are, are very much into working out, especially for those, those muscle benefits, which is, you know, my priority right now is the benefits that it brings to my muscles um, and the, the inflammation related stuff. Mm. And, you know, you can get that from the sun, but in much, much, much smaller um, percentages. Mm. I think you, you can look at light as a nutrient and most people, whether in a hot or cold country, they're living indoors and they're basically overdosing on blue light and they're deficient in all these healthy types of light, even UV light, UVB to get the vitamin D. You know, we're looking at the vitamin D levels at the moment, especially, and most people are deficient. And that's, you know, that's a really serious situation. And most people are also deficient in red and near infrared light, meaning their cells aren't optimized. Their cells aren't producing optimal levels of ATP, the energy that they use. And so by using our panels, you, you know, you're basically creating this, you know, natural therapy that you would have got normally. You know, our ancestors would have got a lot of sunshine, but because we don't in day-to-day -day lives now, we're creating, you know, we're replicating that environment to ensure we are getting enough red light and that increased ATP production. Mm, mm. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Would you guys stack anything with red light? Any other, I don't know, biohacks to mm -hmm. increase your superpowers? I, I stack my I, I stack my red light therapy with Netflix. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, no, that's a great question, and it's you know it, there's time saving is on everybody's mind, especially if you're you know in, living in a busy city in a rat race. Everybody wants to save time, so that's that's a great uh, tip that we like to give people is is double it up with something. You know, so my favorite way to double it up is with um, I do a little bit of reading. So I do I do. Um, I, I'm using currently using the older lights. I'm getting obviously getting new lights very, very soon. So the older lights I'm doing, they're slightly weaker. They're fantastic, but they're just slightly weaker than the new ones. And I do a 20 minute session with that. So 20 minutes, I get to read a couple of pages out of whatever book I'm reading. Uh, and then I um, do foam rolling. So I've got my lights on a stand. I can position them in front of me and then I can go up against the wall. And I use a foam roller on the wall and I hit my back, I hit my shoulders, I can hit my glutes, all the while getting my red light therapy on the front of my body. And then I flip around and I do the foam rolling across the chest, across the shoulder, down the biceps, and I get the red light therapy on my back. And that's, that's my favorite way. But mm. there's, there's a lot of other ways. Um, I, I, I know James likes to stack his stuff with, with different hacks. Yeah, what so, do you do, so, so in the morning, I tend to... Um, start the day with some fresh water and sometimes some, some apple cider vinegar with lemon juice and um, some real salt. Um, and then straight away, I like to get my red light therapy and I generally do some breath work or some meditation. So again, I'm using the, our new Advantage Series lights um, so I can get my treatment time basically down to five minutes front, five minutes back. And in that time, I'm just doing, doing some visualization, meditation, focusing on my breath and relaxing. Um, and for me, it sort of really sets me up mentally and physically to, to, to win the day, basically. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool, man. What about um, children um, and let's say pregnant women or old people? Uh, is red light therapy okay for them? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, no age limit or minimum? Absolutely not. I was going to say the people who benefit the most is the older generations. You know, the, 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 the 65s, the 75s, the 85s, they benefit the most because their natural energy systems have started to decline. It's a natural part of aging. They start to just have less energy and be more tired and be more achy and painy. 
So in my experience, I don't know about James, but like whenever I've given the light to, you know, older people in my family, older people in my community, man, they're over the moon. They're over the moon that their knees start to work. We've got one client, her mother, start, her, her mother started running again and she's in her 60s. This is a woman who apparently couldn't walk up a, a flight of stairs. So, so older people really benefit the most because they you know, tend to have a bit more inflammation and have lower uh, natural energy systems. But same for kids, man. It's beautiful for kids. Mm -hmm. Kids are little energy machines. They're, they need the most calories and the most energy because they're constantly growing. So you throw them in front of a red light therapy just for five minutes a day, small little bodies. That's all they need is five minutes. And they're getting, you know, they might not act different and they might not feel different, but their body is getting that energy boost. Their brains are going to grow. Their bones are going to grow. It's fantastic for kids too. But pregnant women, um, there is no, there's no warning for pregnant women not to use red light therapy. It just hasn't been studied. No one's checked what's going on. So Obviously, you know, legally and, and for caution, we have to say, if you're pregnant, speak to your doctor first. But the light experts, the light scientists say, you know, they've been quoted as saying, probably not a problem. You mm -hmm. know, mother and baby can use more energy while they're pregnant. Um, but our official advice, because we have no proof, is rather speak to your doctor first. Why wouldn't studies go into that? I'm not too sure. I mean, it's... Well, would you let uh, your partner put the hand up and volunteer for that study? It's, um, g given right. the results are, are relatively unknown, I think it's hard. One of those things is it's difficult to get, you know, mm. confirmation on, on the research studies around it. So you, you're left looking at animal studies. And again, I think, uh, again, whenever we look at studies and the results, we, we do our best to always focus on human studies um, just because, you know, Obviously, there's, there's, there's uh, you know, ethical situations around testing on animals, and also it's more reliable as well when you get human studies that confirm a result. I, I believe that stronger than a test on a mouse or a rat. Um, and so I think, especially around pregnancy, it just, just hasn't been researched yet. There hasn't been the appetite from people with the budget and the investment to actually to look into that further as it stands. Okay. Fair enough. It would you know, be good, that, though. That, it, I mean, that <laughs> yeah. being said, you know, the, the, the people, uh, Dr. Michael Hamblin, who it's H-A-M-B-L-I-N, uh, Hamblin, he's considered the foremost researcher in red light therapy. And he's been quoted as saying, it's probably not a problem. Mother and baby could benefit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in this, in this environment, and, you know, out of safety wise, we, we can't say go ahead and do it. Uh, even though we, our personal opinions might be that it would be fine, but legally, you know, we, we just don't have um, the, the, the scientific background to support yeah. it. Okay. Tell me about the new device which you guys are going to have come out. This, 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 this beast. This, Tell me a bit more um, this, of it. You've just touched on it a little bit. Come on, I want to hear a bit more. Well, this is a really exciting because day, today is day one. Um, we've just, we, well, it hasn't even started yet. Tomorrow is going to be day one, but today we made like an announcement on Instagram that uh, these new lights are on their way, the Advantage series. So th these lights are just basically, you know, a development. It's obviously technology is constantly developing. We've got better technology now. We've got more powerful LEDs. We've got um, safer LEDs. You know, there's no danger with LEDs, but they obviously they're an electrical device. Um, so they give off um, electromagnetic fields. So we've got better technology. So the, the, the electromagnetic field is eliminated completely. Um, and they're more powerful. They're bigger. Uh, there's more LEDs. There's touch controls. There's digital timers to time your session. Uh, and the most exciting mm. thing is that they're connectable, like James was saying. You know, our old lights, um, they were single units. So each one had to be operated individually. There was no digital connection between them. Now, you know, you can buy one today and, and test it out and go, oh my God, I really love this. You know, I, I want a bigger one because, you know, obviously people are going to expect me to say this, but bigger is better. You know, the more lights you can have, the bigger lights you can buy is better because it's about getting the all over coverage in one session. You know, you yeah. can have, you can buy the single light, you can buy the small light and still get phenomenal benefits but it's going to be magnitudes higher if you get more coverage over your body per session. With a smaller light, for example, you've got to do shoulder, back, other shoulder, stand up, get the quads, 
get the glutes. You know, if you want to hit all your body, which I personally do, you need a bigger light. Mm. So these new lights, they're connectable and they can become massive, massive <laughs> lights. And that way you get that five minutes, you've got head to ankles and, you know, past your shoulders, you're getting the entire thing done in five minutes. That's amazing. Mm. So let's, let's talk about prices. What, what are the prices of all the different red light uh, therapy devices that you have starting we've from got, the cheapest? Yeah, we've got, so we've got <laughs> the, the cheapest, the smallest light is our target light. Mm. Um, so with all these lights, you're going to get the same benefit. It's the same quality of light. It's the same quality of therapy. It's just, you know, the, the smallest light is that size. It's got 12 LEDs in it. Um, and that's, you know, affordable for most people. Um, what we find people do is that they're curious, but they're not necessarily convinced. So they get the small light and they mm. test it. You know, they test it on their skin or they test it on the injured elbow or the injured knee. And then they go, Jesus, man, like this is incredible. Like just with this little light, I'm getting, you know, more movement, more mobility in my joint. Then they come back three months later and they buy the biggest setup, you know, they can afford. So it's, um, it's definitely a question of space and what you can afford. You know, if you can afford the biggest light, in my opinion, then you go for that because then you're getting all over coverage. You're getting all those benefits, but you know, th there is a price tag to it. It's not, you know, it's, it's not a cheap device. It's not a cheap therapy, but you know, it's, it's as cheap as we can get it for the quality of light that we, we want to put together because you can get cheap lights, but if you test them, um, you know, some of them you don't even need to test because they tell you, Hey, one hour a day to get all your red light therapy benefits. It's like, I personally, I don't have that time. <laughs> um, so we've got everything from the, you know, the target light, which is 12 LEDs all the way up to, you know, the, we call it the armory, which is our biggest light. Uh, and that's 2,400 LEDs. And that's obscene. Mm -hmm. it's, that's a beautiful amount of light. What, what is the actual prices though? What is the actual price? So what's the, um, for, for the, the, the target light, how much does that one cost? So the target light um, retails at 95 pounds. Um, and then we've got the half stack, which is again, you know, a great light at 50 centimeters tall of lights, 100 LEDs. Mm -hmm. And that is 475. Then our full stack, which was, was our flagship light, light until today. Mm -hmm. um, and that's got 200 LEDs and that retails at 795. And then our Advantage series, again, you know, if you buy one unit of the Advantage series, it currently retails at 1500. Um, but again, in terms of proportion of LEDs, you get 300 LEDs and it's a higher intensity. So in terms of bang for your buck, that's actually very good value when you compare it to other light therapy devices, the amount of LEDs and the intensity. And then that unit can then be built, you know, built together. You can get six of them clipped together to, to create this 2,400, sorry, your know, 2,400 stack of lights, which is, you know, a marvel to see. Wow. Wow. I definitely got to have a look at that. I think I need one definitely, of those in my house. <laughs> Look, all, all jokes aside, hmm. you're the kind of person we, you know, the big lights are made for because you're bigger hmm. than the average man. So you need, you need a bigger light. And, you know, <laughs> all right. Nice so, okay. yeah, he's, he's, just, he's just flexed his biceps on camera, everybody. <laughs> it's really, I mean, it's, it's, it's Sorry, a beautiful bro. sight as well. Be, yeah, see, I'm all flustered now. I'm all flustered. I'm all nervous. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're, mm. we're working with a lot of professional rugby players and these guys are giants as well, giants. So mm. they, they need the big light so they can get, you know, shoulder to shoulder, which, you know, they're double the width of me. They can get the whole front of their bodies in that five minute session, turn around and get the whole back of the body. Now, if you're, you know, if you're not a, a, into gym like we are, working out like we are, you're not a, a, a large person, you're not overly muscular or overly wide, you can get away with, with less light. It's about the body coverage. So, you know, when people, when people speak to us and when they ask us, that's, that's one of the questions. Like, like, how big are you? How wide are you? You know, like, have you, have you got, can you, can you get in front of this light and, you know, get most of your body done? Or, you know, then, then it becomes the time. How much time have you got? Can you spend time changing directions? Are you happy to do that? Do you have the space? Do you have the money? It's, it's all those things that we, you know, we try and cover. We try and talk to people you know, like the first thing people say to us, you know, someone will message us every day. Someone messages us says, um, is this going to, uh, help me build more muscle? 
yes, as part of a healthy lifestyle. You've, you've got to get all the other things done, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's brilliant. Makes sense, totally. Sometimes people, they... Wait a minute, am I getting feedback? Mic check, one, two. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes people want to try something new in hope that they're going to lose weight. Just that sort of thing. Um, or like a supplement to try and lose weight. But it is, it is that real holistic approach, what you're saying there. Everything needs to be in balance first, and then you'll get the benefit. But red light for me, I've found, has been just pretty incredible. The sleep has been really amazing. Um, but I have found that I don't know what it is. Maybe it's other things I need to check out. But sometimes I find that if I use the panel before going to bed, I might be quite awake. I don't mm. know if that has ever happened to you before. Um, but in the morning, brilliant. At night, it mm. varies. Yeah. So what's, what's your thoughts? Me too. Me too. Oh, really? That's exactly, that, yeah, that's exactly my experience. So um, everybody's slightly different because a lot of our clients use it just before bed, right before climbing into bed, and they, have, they say they have the best sleep. So everybody's slightly different. I find that um, I can use red light therapy a much shorter session around sunset, and I sleep fine. But if I go too long, um, then I tend to feel like I have almost like a little caffeine buzz. You know, I'm lying in bed, and I'm just feeling... I'm feeling a little bit of, a, of an energetic thing going on. Um, and another thing that you could try is, is toggle between the two wavelengths of light. So try just red light at your sunset session and for a few days and then try just the infrared light at the sunset session and see how you feel because that mm. can make a difference too. Yeah, so I've des awesome. definitely noticed the same thing. And so if I'm doing an evening session, I always flip off the near infrared. That's what, for me, penetrates a little bit deeper, a little bit more stimulating. Um, whereas the red light, they say, is optimal for skin and wound healing and circadian rhythm alignment. So again, you know, if you're going to do an evening session and you haven't, you know, and you, you've used infrared earlier in the day, I would just try red light. And I think you should find you sleep a little bit better as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just make sure your panel has dual functionality so you can switch on and off both types of light independently. Yeah, yeah. I found that this isn't quite red light, but the infrared, I've got an infrared sauna by clear light. And there had been times I've used that and I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready to do something. And it's like 11 o'clock in the evening. So uh, yeah. Mm. I need to figure out what I'm going to do yeah, about that's, that. <laughs> that's, some, that's something you could, you could, you know, think about it in the biological sense, you know, because if you were still a hunter gatherer, the chances of you being, you know, penetrated by that much infrared light at 11 o'clock at night is impossible in nature. Mm. Right. Because that infrared light, the only place that comes from is the sun and from fire. I mean, so mm. okay, granted you could be sitting around a fire at 11 o'clock at night, but ancestrally speaking, probably not because, you know, they, they, fire was a very important tool. It wasn't a, a leisure thing. Let's sit around the fire and talk all night. The amount of infrared from that was probably not as much as the sun, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Correct. Okay. Well, I think I'm good. I think I have everything I need, really. You guys awesome. have been amazing. Yeah. Is there anything fun, else man. you'd probably like to add about mm -hmm. red light? Yeah, not really from my from my perspective, James. Perhaps I think we've covered a lot a lot of ground here. So yeah, thanks yeah. for having us, Roger. Oh, yeah. thank you, great. thank you. Now, if anybody wants to find Red Light Rising, where is the best place to go? So they can um, start on the Instagram. Instagram is always a fun place. We've got a lot of cool stuff happening there. So on Instagram, it's just at Red Light Rising. Uh, it's the same on Facebook and then the website, which is actually, we've launched a new website today as well. So it's a very exciting day all around. Um, <laughs> awesome. Redlightrising.co.uk. They can also find, um, you know, they can find myself and James through the website or through Instagram if they want to keep an eye on us as well. 
Uh, James has got a lot of cool things that he does for his own, you know, his daily wellness stuff and, and myself as well. Something that's actually super important is that, you know, I know we've spoken about, the, you know, pretty much only red light therapy today, but red light rising is actually, we're, we're turning into a, a health performance and recovery company because James and I realized we were like, well, we don't only do red light therapy and it's not the only thing you can do to make yourself feel better. It's, it's a fantastic tool but there's a lot of other stuff that we can do as well. And there's a lot of other stuff that James and I already do do. So, um, you know, we're, we're kind of working on, on developing the website and developing the business into be more of a, more of a rounded um, performance and recovery um, business, you know? So for example, we're bringing out some blue blockers very, very soon, which we spoke about, which is the glasses that you wear to block the artificial light going into your eyes at night. So we're bringing out uh, a range of blue blockers very, very soon. James and I have been using blue blockers for, you know, way before anybody else. Well, not anybody else, but way before they became trendy yeah. when they were just ridiculous, ugly looking things. Um, so we've been using them for a long time. And, and that's the problem is that they are so ugly. So I want to, you know, I wanted to make a pair that I'm like, I could actually wear those to a restaurant. Like I would feel comfortable going out, you know, in whatever city and wearing these blue blockers. So, you know, in my opinion, we've, we've, we're bringing out some very, very sexy blue blockers pretty soon. That's yes, brilliant. Yeah. I think, I think it would be great to, um, have a chat again. Once you have some more stuff, I definitely sure. want to talk about that. Your new sure. style of blue blockers as well, mm -hmm. because it's true. Some of them out there, it's not too attractive. Mm. So it'd be uh -huh. great to see. I, I just, I, I don't know what happens because when you look at all the main, the main blue block companies, you know, they're, they're decent product. I, I just, maybe one out of 50 styles. I'm like, okay, I would wear that. I would pay that money and I would wear it out in public. And the rest I'm like, they don't suit me. Um, and I think they're ugly in my opinion, <laughs> you know, in my opinion. Um, so that's, that's what, that's what I said to James. I said, well, James said to me is like, well, let's make blue blockers. And I said, okay, but only if we can make this particular style, because I'm not going to wear them if, if I don't like them. So, uh, we've got that going on and, so you and definitely got one sale. We've got one, definitely got one sale. Yeah. I mean, one I I'll, I'll buy one as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two sales there and a discount. Oh, awesome. Um, but then after that, we're, we're in the process of developing foam rollers because I've been using foam rollers for eight years now. I found a foam roller that I love. It's not available anymore from the company that I bought it from. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll make a better one. And we'll, you know, we want to now sell foam rollers that I actually use and I actually love. And I think everybody should foam roll. It's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I do do that on a regular basis. Sure. I also use a, uh, a massage gun. Mm -hmm. so I do a little roll in and a massage gun. I feel amazing yeah. afterwards. It's, it's unbelievable, man. It's, I don't go for massages because nine times out of 10, I'm let down. I'm like, that wasn't strong enough. <laughs> but with a foam roller or a lacrosse ball or a massage ball, like, oh man, I get the pressure that I want. I get the spots that I want. I get the relief that I want. It's, it's a game changer, man. I foam roll every single day. Every, every single day. Morning. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Quickly, before we close up, I noticed you've also got these bags, some bean bags. Is that right? Bean bags? Is it bean bags? Sand bags, sorry. Oh, sand. <laughs> oh, bean bags? We're selling bean bags. It sounds cool. It sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I've actually just launched um, a company myself uh, called Heavy. That's uh, at officially heavy on Instagram and Facebook. And that's um, just another passion of mine. You know, I've, um, since I regained my health, I know we didn't go into that on the podcast, but since I've, I was very, very sick for a long time, uh, and since I got my health back, I've really fallen in love with functional fitness. And, you know, the, predominantly the, the equipment that I've been using is sandbags. I've also been using kettlebells and gymnastic rings and um, a few other bits. But I absolutely fell in love with the sandbag. So, you know, that's just what it sounds like for people who don't know. It's just like a, in my case, it's um, uh, like a rectangular, cylindrical shaped, big, heavy duty bag that you can then fill with sand to whatever weight you want. And it becomes a, a really formidable workout tool. So, yeah, I've just, um, I've just launched this company called Heavy. And uh, we're selling, uh, in my opinion, some very, very beautiful sandbags. And um, the website is, uh, by the time this podcast is out, the website will be open, officiallyheavy.com. Uh, and it's something I'm very, very passionate about and, and really enjoy doing. So really happy splendid. About 
no that's brilliant that's brilliant i saw a post and i was like brilliant because i remember we had a chat about that so i thought mm. let me just throw that in the story to show a little support I know, um, I saw that, dude. Thank you so much, man, by the way, for posting. No worries. That. No worries at all. I appreciate what you guys are doing, man. You're doing an amazing job. Uh, very creative, very innovative, and you guys have a lot of passion for what you do. Mm. Um, Thanks, man. Would you happen to have any kind of incentives, any discounts for anyone that might be listening at all? Um, 100%, of course. Um, all right. We we can do something for you. Uh, so basically how it works is we need to decide on a discount code. So mm -hmm. your listeners can use your discount code. And if anyone decides to buy um, a product from red light rising, I guess, you know, for, for heavy as well, for officially heavy.com let's, how about we make your code snipes? Okay. Yeah. Does that work with you? Perfect. Awesome, Perfect. man. Awesome. So anybody who hears this and is interested can, of course, reach out to us and ask us whatever questions you need to. If you decide to buy, you can use the code SNIPES on uh, redlightrising.co.uk and officiallyheavy.com. You're going to get yourself 5% discount off any products you want there. Splendid. Now, that's what I like. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Brian and James. It's been incredible. Awesome. It's been great. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, anytime. Let's catch up again soon. Thanks, Roger. Appreciate it.